So, Modern Horizons 3 is doing badly in pre-sales. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, I couldn't see this happening after a $500 release price point on Amazon, but I guess it is what it is. Um, you'd think Hasbro and Watsi would learn their lesson, but, you know, I guess uh, old habits die hard, as they say. But I guess I can't really say anything bad about Watsi and Hasbro, right? Their earnings report was apparently very good. Their stock's up over 7% on the day, which is massive. Um, uh, you know, I have a few shares, nothing crazy, but uh, it, it was nice to see a little bit of a green tick when it's been pretty much flat to negative. Um, but that's for another video. We'll probably talk about that later in the week. So Modern Horizons 3. I gotta be honest with you. When I came back from vacation, it's great to be back, by the way. Um, had a good time and uh, got some relaxing and a nice little break, and I'm excited to get back. A little tired, though. Got in at 3 a.m. last night, so definitely a little beat, but, um, but yeah, you know, I, I came back, and I, and I saw this drama over, over Modern, uh, Modern Horizons, and, and I guess they spoiled these flip planeswalkers, which I read a couple of them, and they, yeah, I don't know, they, they seem like fine, you know, they seem like okay, uh, nothing, you know, nothing that's gonna break the bank or anything like that, I don't think, I think probably the best one out of them was Grist, I don't know, if you guys, you, you competitive players, throw a comment below, tell me which one was the best, but, um, but yeah, you know, when they originally spoiled it, they obviously spoiled them rock cooled and they spoiled the fetch lands that are going to be in it. By the way, if they learned anything from Ravnica Remastered, they're probably going to do the same thing with these collector boxes with these fetch lands. Now, mind you, it'll probably have some, ah, well, I, I don't even know if you could say that because, well, um, Ravnica Remastered didn't really affect the Shockland pricing, which was, which was interesting, but Maybe that was Modern Horizons 2 being, you know, overprinted or something like that. And that affected the price of the other the other fetch lands. But I, I just don't I just don't see it happening this time and and I'm solely going based off of what happened with Ravnica Remastered. That's just my opinion on it. I don't know if there's negativity around that. I, I would imagine not, just because of, you know, how well it's gone uh with Ravnica Remastered. And I'm sure there's gonna be serialized fetch lands, which is gonna throw another, you know, uh another revenue stream for collectors. It's just, it's just interesting. It seems like all this negativity is based off these flip planeswalkers that came up. Now, it's not like every set needs to have banger, you know, uh, mythics. Um, so they spoiled what? Moxman was saying it today. I think it's going to be like a 300, three, five card set, something like that. And they spoiled six of the 24 uh, mythics and the Flip Planeswalkers ended up being duds out of those mythics. So people, you know, are, are you know, naturally feeling pretty bummed about that, which I, which, you know, I kind of identify with. But at the same time, weren't those leaked, you know? Um, it probably wasn't the, the mythics that, that were planned to come out first. Um, maybe they were, I'm not, I'm not too sure. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I think we're probably going to see some better spoilers, things like that, you know, when, when things start to heat up. I just saw one just a minute ago that was like a like a Blood Moon for Islands, which was pretty sweet. It was like, a, I think it was a Merfolk, which is dope for Mer Merfolk. Blech, Merfolk. Um, one generic, two blue, whatever power and toughness, and, and all non-basic lands are islands. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Um, don't know how people are going to react to that, especially turning everything into islands. It's, uh, it's interesting. But... I, you know, it's just, it's a very interesting thing. I, I'm, I really, I really don't think it's about the, the Planeswalkers, and I'm sure you guys are probably commenting below already, or you've already hit the dislike button and run. It's probably not about that. It's probably more about the price point and, uh, and, you know, customers just kind of being fed up with the whole, uh, let me drain you for every penny you have every set that comes out. And now, People saw that Thunder Junction is actually a good set. And more money's moving to Thunder Junction than Modern Horizons. People are seemingly more willing to spend their money on a standard set, which is very good. I actually think that's a very, very good thing going forward. You want the standard sets to support the product. And everything else around that could be reprint sets, things like that. Cool, you know, side things and, and you know, um, chase sort of collector products. Um... So yeah, we're, we're probably going to make a video about Thunder Junction later in this week, but it's, 
it, it really is amazing to see a set do so well that it's actually taking demand away from probably one of the best series of modern reprint sets we've ever seen. So, do I think ultimately the price will drop a little bit more? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I at this point, I, I expect a, a TCG player sale pretty much every uh, <laughs> pretty much every, every time two weeks before the set comes out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if it sticks around four hundred, I I don't know. I mean, is it reasonable to see a, maybe like a three sixty nine ninety nine? On, on TCG player a couple weeks before, and then does the price stick around that? That seems reasonable, honestly. That seems, that seems like a reasonable price point, and honestly, I don't think many people will be upset about it, and as more spoilers come out, more, um, you know, more hype comes out for this set, I think people will be happier with that sort of price range. Still super expensive. I mean, I still recall back in the days when, you know, Modern Masters came out, and ooh, I don't want to, well, I, I don't care if I'm wrong. I, I think I remember it being something like $250 a set or a box rather uh, when like, you know, a normal standard box was a hundred. So yeah, it, it commanded a higher price point. I don't think that's bad necessarily. Um, it should, they're probably going to put a lot of power into it, especially when they're going with director modern cards. I mean, I don't need to tell you how good modern horizons been, uh, has been with their first and second set. I have to imagine that they're at least going to try and follow it up with the third. It might fall flat. I'm not going to say it's like a, a guaranteed home run. You know, people a couple months back thought the set was going to be a guaranteed home run just because of past performance, but look at it now. Look at it now. There's not there's not much money flowing into it. Sellers already panic selling, lowering prices. I think I saw it as low as... Uh, for collector boxes, I saw it as low as... Like 380 Today, something like that. I think it's back up to 400. It's it's definitely moving. It's not like it's not, you know, moving and grooving, but uh, but it's so interesting to see um, the immediate, like, pullback from sellers or the, the immediate, like, get this off my books when something just start, doesn't start to sell well. But I think that, I think, like I said in this video, I think it's a mix of two things. I think it's one... I mean, Thunder Junction's doing well. Let's let's call it what it is. People want to spend the money on something that's already out, doing very well. Lots of good rares, not just mythics. Lots of good rares. Um, you know, if, I mean, there there are some really really powerful cards in that set, and I really don't think we've seen the end of cards spiking in uh, in Thunder Junction. The card that I don't even think is good, Spike. Tiny Bones, well, okay, I don't think it's not good. I think it's fine, but it's just, you know, it just kind of feels all right. That's all I'm going to say. And, you know, $25 is what I'm seeing it go for now. That feels a little better, although I do think it will probably settle out around maybe maybe that 16 to, 16 to 18 point during standard. And then once it falls out of standard, I, I do kind of see it as like a $12 card. Right, it's good. It's good in Commander. It's probably it probably has a home in I don't know some Demir or Rakdos pile in uh, in sixty card formats, and obviously in Commander it's going to be just fine. So yeah, I don't really I don't really see it being like you know the next Ragavan, you know. So um, but then you have cards that like like that Slick Shot that came out that are just propelling, you know, uh, modern formats and making burn really good again. And obviously it's going to be played in standard. It's just, it's cool to see standard cards like that really accepted, you know, and, and people actually wanting to pay money for them and people wanting to buy boxes for them. And it's actually just kind of sitting flat at that 217 to 220 point on TCG player, which is Honestly, exactly what I want to see out of a collector box. I don't think 220 is an, an unreasonable price point. I really don't. Um, and I, I gotta be honest, I, I do think I do think 144 is a little high for a for a you know essentially a a little bit better draft booster, but I mean that's the day and age we're in. And if people are willing to pay $144 for that, well then that's great for the game of magic. That's great for the players of magic, and it's great for you know circulating singles and, and bringing money into magic and, and everything like that. So honestly, 
if people are willing to pay for it, then I'm very happy for it. So, but we're talking about modern, <laughs> modern masters. Uh, so, modern, have I said modern masters this whole time? Sorry, modern horizons. Oh my sweet Lord. Guys, I'm super tired if you couldn't tell. But, um, but yeah, and then, and then the second point's the price point. The price point of it was just, was just ridiculous. And, and I really do think that was just Wizards seeing if they could get away with it. And I think for a second they did. I think when we saw this negativity with um, Thunder Junction, then, you know, we, we saw more people spending money in Modern Horizons, everything like that. And, and now that there's a lot of positivity with Thunder Junction, nobody wants to spend money on Modern Horizons. So I think that's what I have to say about that. But if you guys like the video, uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you want to dislike the video, dislike it. That's perfectly fine. I appreciate all of you tuning in and all of you who subscribed and came back after my five day break. I truly appreciate all of you. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, yeah, I just, uh, uh, bye. <laughs>